Hi, it's Darno with D Grill. I've got myself some beef short ribs here, and they are USDA choice. I'm going to be cooking them up in the Green Mountain Grill's Daniel Boom pellet smoker. This is the night before the cook, and I'm going to be prepping these tonight to smoke them tomorrow. And so I'm going to get these on out of the cryo bag right now. Okay, so I've got the ribs out of the cryo bag. You see these two huge slabs. This is the back side here, and this is the top fatty side. And kind of similar for the other one there. So I'm just going to work on pulling the membrane off the back of these ribs, off the side with the bones. And these beef ribs have like this huge fat layer membrane. I mean, this is really easier to get up under and pull than with pork ribs. These beef ribs, it's just huge. So I'm just going to get this off the back of both slabs. Alright, so I've got the membrane off the back of both slabs of ribs. And unlike pork ribs, you don't even have to put a knife into these with a paper towel. You can just stick your finger under there and pull and it peels right off because it's just like a huge layer of membrane on the back of them. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and trim some of the top fat off of both slabs. Alright, so I finished trimming the fat, so I just want to show you this one, the fat's been trimmed, the membrane removed. And this other one here, you can see that the fat's been trimmed. Membrane removed from this one as well. And i got to tell you, I mean, with all the fat and membrane that was removed, you know, I feel like I probably removed four or five pounds. Just the fat and membrane alone, there was so much. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my seasoning, that's some Grillmate Montre Grillmates Montreal steak seasoning. And you know, you can use whatever you want. If you just want to use salt and pepper, that's fine too. But I like this. So I'm going to use this seasoning all over the beef ribs now. Alright, so I got these all seasoned up. And so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap them in plastic wrap, put them in the fridge, and then in the morning we'll get them out and we'll start smoking them. Alright, so it's the following morning and the ribs are out sitting, just kind of warming up and going to go ahead and start getting the grill prepared. And as far as our grill setup goes, inside I've just got the uh, mat that I usually put underneath the grates and just going to be putting the ribs up there on the grate. And so I'm going to go ahead and start getting the grill all started up and warmed up. Okay, so now I'm in the app and I'm going to power the grill on. So with powering the grill on, I'm going to set a temperature, initial temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And so just confirming that. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you the profile that I'm going to use for this cook. I made one up called beef ribs. And here in my profile called beef ribs, I start out at 180 degrees Fahrenheit smoking them slow and low for three hours with the bones down and then after three hours of that I'm going to flip them bone side up insert the meat probe and wait until they're 155 degrees Fahrenheit in meat temperature and they're going to run at 245 after I flip them to have the bone side up and after they've reached 155 I'm going to wrap and basically put some beef broth and some rub in there and going to let them run a 275 wrapped 
until they get to somewhere between like 195 and 204. And while I have them bone side up and I have that meat probe in waiting for them to get to 155, I'm going to split some with beef broth every hour while that's going on. But we'll let the grill go ahead and finish warming up and then we'll go ahead and get the ribs on in there. So let me give you the weather report. Right now it's 44 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny. Real feel is 42 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to get up eventually to a high today of 58 degrees Fahrenheit. And currently the wind speed is at 9 miles per hour. Humidity is 45%. And so it's a pretty nice day for a grill. It's a little cool, but that's okay. We've got our blanket on. And I have found with the blanket something that I want to point out. I found with the blanket everything cooks faster. With the blanket you really do, uh, you know, save on pellets and things cook faster because it holds heat better. If you remember the cook that I did with the pork ribs, the baby back ribs in my last video, they cooked up faster than baby back ribs that I did on a warmer day without the blanket sometime earlier in a much earlier video. So this blanket does help out a lot and so with these beef ribs, I'll just have to keep an eye on things and, you know, make sure that I don't you know, overdo it on the beef ribs. But we'll let this finish warming up and then we'll get them on in there. All right, so the grill has reached 180. Here are our beef ribs that were set and wrapped up in the fridge overnight. And so I'm going to go ahead and put them in now. And I've started the profile on the grill. And I'm using just the last of my fruit wood pellets to start. And then I'm going to move over into some hickory. Well, actually I'm going to move into some GMG Texas blend pellets. And then if I exhaust those, then I'll move over into some hickory pellets. But we'll let this go ahead and smoke for now. All right, so it's been three hours of smoking. So now I'm going to open up, flip them over and stick the meat probe in. So I'll just let you have a look at them before I flip them over. That's how they look. Look pretty good. And I'm not only going to flip them, I'm going to move them so these here are going to be over there and vice versa. There we go. We're good to go there. Now we'll just uh, slide that one over a little bit. Now I'm going to close things on up and let them continue to cook. Temperature will go up to 245 in a moment. We'll let them ride like that to they reach 155 degrees meat temperature. All right, and checking the meat probe temp, actually they're already up to 172. Like I said, this blanket makes everything cook hotter and faster. So, you know, when I've done beef ribs before, I could smoke them for three hours at 180. They wouldn't be 155 already. I mean, a one. Yeah, it wouldn't be 155 already, but these are already at 172, so things cook so much hotter with the blanket, and it takes a lot of learning and readjusting to it. So basic things are going to be already at the, um, you know, over 155. This thing is going to kick into, like, the 275 in the profile, so I'm going to have to rearrange my profile here. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. Since things are hotter than expected, I'm just doing away with the profile. I'm just going to basically flip them back over so the bones are down, put them in the wrap, and up the temperature to 245 now, and I'll just watch them cook until they're like, you know, that 190 plus degree range, probably 195 to 204, whenever they probe test real nice and smooth. But I'm going to go ahead and get the wrap and the rub and all that stuff and the beef broth and all, and get that all prepared now real quick. I'm just going to check this meat temp with my thermopin real quick, just to confirm. Yeah, it's in the one, yeah, it's 170. It's all the way 170. So the uh, temperatures are correct that we're getting here. Things are just rolling hot. That blanket, I mean, what can I say? Got them wrapped up, so I'll just up the temp to 245. We'll just see how much longer this thing goes. 
All right, so things are still cooking here on the beef ribs. As you can hear, it's the neighbor's dog because things are getting warmer. But what I've done is I've put the iGrill 2 over here and I've got the ambient probe in there because I just wanted to check and see what the temp is inside of the grill. And right now the ambient probe is showing about 279 is what the ambient probe is picking up. So the ambient probe, you know, now it's at 280. So the ambient probe is picking up a little hotter than my set temp at 280. And I've got the probe right here a little up I mean, it's on the grates, but it's, you know, just kind of right over where the ambient probe is for the smoker itself. It's just a little above it. So, you know, I guess it should read maybe a little hotter. But, uh, you know, it is running a little hot with the blanket on. And, of course, with the ambient probe naturally being lower, it's always going to read a little lower than a probe that's above the grates a little higher. Um... I guess I was thinking about recalibrating for that to adjust the grill, but the difference is not that great. You know, it's not like it's reading 300 or more on my iGrill 2 versus what I'm, you know, getting on the smoker. So I'm just going to leave things as they are with the smoker. I'm not going to adjust its calibration at all, you know, because the probe being above the grates, I feel naturally is going to be a little hotter. But at this point in time, things have been cooking for about four hours total, a little over four hours total. And the food temperature, the meat temperature is up to 179 now that I wrapped it and I put the, uh, you know, the fluids in there and such. The temperature is starting to rise a little slower, but now it's like 179, 180 on the food. The temperature the grill is running at is 245. And so I'm just going to let it just keep on rolling like this because usually when you wrap it and all that, you know, things kind of get into more of the stall and such anyway. And so I think they'll come out nice and tender when this is all said and done. So I'll bring you on back later, but I just wanted to check the grill to see how it was running on temp versus an independent check separately. And I also want to mention, you know, I'm aware, you know, grills have hot spots. I'm aware of the hot spots on mine and where they are. Um, the independent check that I was doing was not to deal with that because I know that's a given with my grill. But just to do an independent check right around where their ambient probe is versus an independent check. And so, just going to leave it as is. I'll bring you back later. Alright, so the beef ribs have been going for six hours now. And what happened was when it got to five and a half half hours I had to lower the temperature because the meat reached 200 after five and a half hours so I lowered the temperature down to about 165 on the grill which if you think about that 35 degree differential is probably kind of around 200 degrees I'm thinking the blanket really makes the difference as far as that's concerned but uh, I left it like that for like the last 30 minutes. The meat temperature is now at about 202 or so. Because I guess, you know, even if you stop the heat completely, it's going to do carryover, you know. So it's up to about 202 on the meat. And I just want to do some poke testing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, super smooth. I mean, it's going in super smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and get this meat out now. Alright, get these in out of here. I'm just going to take them out of the paper now and just put them in my pan here. Have a good look at them. Look at this one here. Wow, that's good. I think they're kind of stuck a little on the bottom there. Look at that, that bone's about to fall off. Get this other one out.
really good stuff and I do know that my grill cooks a little hotter on this side than that side. That's something I know going in from the joke. But they look good and so I'm going to go ahead and take them inside. Alright, so they've had some time to rest and so now I'm going to just go ahead and cut into them and I will say before I cut into them I did get to exhaust my fruit wood pellets which I know aren't really the pellets to use for beef but I was just determined to finish those off because I really want to be done with them so most of the smoking was actually done with the fruit wood pellets but I did finish them off and then I threw in the Texas blend but things were already getting starting to get wrapped up at that point so we'll see how this did and I still think it's going to be okay but we're going to cut on in here now. Alright, so we see the smoking. We see, um, you know, pretty good smoke ring there. Pretty good smoke through there. So, that looks good as far as the smoke ring. So, I'm going to, you know, get one of these gigantic things. I'm going to cut, cut this one here. And I'm going to just throw it onto a plate. I mean, that that's huge. So I'm going to throw it onto this plate I have here, and we'll do a quick taste test. So here's our beef rib, nicely smoked. Let's do a taste. So, the beef ribs, they taste good. The smoke, since I used the fruit wood, it's not as strong a smoke as if I used like the Texas or the Hickory. I would definitely recommend using like the Texas or the Hickory. You know, if you're not on a mission like me just to burn up all your fruit wood pellets, then, you know, use like Texas smoke blend, Hickory. Use, you know, one of the harder woods that's going to give a stronger flavor than like a fruit wood. I mean, I do taste some smoke in there. There is smoke flavor in there. It, but it's just not like a harder wood, but everything turned out well The thing that I'm really learning is how to adjust with the blanket and you know It's kind of like for me. Do I want to recalibrate the settings on the grill? Or do I just want to lower my cooking temperatures or just you know deal with things cooking faster? I think I'll probably just bring my temperatures down some to try and compensate for the blanket adding what seems to be maybe about 35 degrees temp to the cooker and I mean you know whether it's cold or hotter it seems like that blanket just really adds a lot to the game as far as heat and holds that heat in well no matter what temp is outside so you know it's a learning curve there and I, I like it I mean I'm very happy that I was gifted a blanket thank you again for the blanket but it's um you know all good it's all good the beef ribs turned out good and so you know I just hope that this helps you if you're thinking about you know smoking yourself up some beef ribs and with all of that said in the video description you can find ways to help this channel as well as a link to a printable version of this uh, same recipe instructions and such and you can also find my blog thegrillsmoke.com where I have other recipes and such and if you did like this video please do give it a thumbs up share the video with a friend leave your comments subscribe hit that notification icon and good eating.